Hey, what's up guys, Matt with The Movement System. In this video, we're gonna review this article to figure out if drop sets are just bro science or if there's real science to this technique in maximizing muscle hypertrophy and strength gains. You'll notice that this article says Brad Schoenfeld, so you know you're in for a treat. The order that we're gonna go in for this video is first, we'll go through terminology, then we'll go through the research review, and then lastly, we'll give you some takeaways so that we can figure out exactly how to use this information for your own workouts. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Okay, so to start off, let's talk about terminology here. So what is a drop set? A drop set is a technique where we're typically loading up an exercise and going near failure or all the way to failure and then dropping the weight or decreasing the weight to then do additional reps. An example of this would be squatting 315 and then dropping down to 225 and then dropping down to 135 and repping out with those lower weights. This is a technique for increasing the volume of your workout at submaximal loads. This technique is pretty common in the gym and you will see a lot of people doing this at the end of their main sets. Another technique that we wanna be familiar with is called rest pause training. A rest pause set involves breaking up a bigger set into smaller mini sets. There are different ways to apply this technique, but the main difference between a rest pause set and a drop set is that for a rest pause set, you're typically leaving the weight the same and doing short rests of say 10 or 15 seconds. So for example, instead of doing a set of 10 with a certain weight, we may break it down to three mini sets of four, and that may actually allow us to get 12 reps with the same weight that we could have done for 10 straight reps. Using this technique, we can hypothetically stay a little bit more fresh for our workouts, maintain our technique for longer, and use higher loads. This rest pause technique can hypothetically improve the amount of strength that you're building and the technique that you're using by incorporating these short rests in the middle of the set. With all that said, let's go ahead and dive into this research article and see what the research says. This is a pretty important study because there's not that much research out there on drop sets and rest pause sets. This is a well-designed randomized control trial from 2021. This study used trained subjects, which is really important because that helps us to generalize these findings to more well-trained individuals. I'm gonna summarize the protocol, but I will link the study below if you wanna read all the details. So the way it basically worked is that the group of trained subjects were randomized to one of three main groups, either drop sets, rest pause sets, or a traditional lifting protocol. The participants then performed an eight week intervention that was volume equated. This means that all three of those training protocols involved the same volume of training. At the beginning and the end of this eight week intervention, one rep max was tested as well as muscle thickness to indicate hypertrophy. So they were measuring two things with this study, strength and hypertrophy. Now let's take a look at the outcomes. One of the conclusions that the study came to was that rest pause elicited a slightly superior benefit for strength adaptations compared to traditional resistance training. This is basically saying that the group that did the rest pause sets had the best improvement in one rep max specifically. This is an indication that rest pause training may be more effective than the other two training methods of drop sets and more traditional methods, specifically for the outcome of improving one rep max strength. In terms of hypertrophy, which was the other primary variable that was measured, all protocols resulted in similar amounts of muscle hypertrophy. I will say that this is not entirely surprising. It was only an eight week intervention and it's hard to get meaningful hypertrophy differences in that short amount of time. And I wanna mention as well that this is only one randomized controlled trial. There's actually a previous study from Brad Schoenfeld as well from 2017 that actually did show more hypertrophy from a drop set intervention. It was a different protocol and I will link that one in the description if you wanna dive into that a little bit further. With that said, let me give you my thoughts and my interpretation of the literature and how this fits in. I think rest pause sets are probably a better technique for maintaining bar speed, maintaining technique, and improving one rep max strength. This is a technique that essentially allows us to practice doing just the first few reps instead of doing longer sets. When we do longer sets, especially over six reps, our form does tend to break down and that can negatively impact our ability to maintain tightness and build technique for one rep max strength. And this is part of why we typically see that high loads, low reps provide the best outcomes for strength. Drop sets very likely lead to extended metabolic stress meaning that it's tough to recover from multiple sets close to failure. I think this can make up a piece of a hypertrophy program, but it's probably not something that we wanna be doing over and over and over again, because if we're doing that on Monday, it's going to impair our ability to work out with intensity even on Wednesday and Thursday. 
So for example, if we're squatting heavy on Monday and we squat to failure multiple times with drop sets, when it comes to our Wednesday session, we're gonna think that we're training hard, but really we're at very sub-maximal intensity because we're still being impaired by the fatigue that we experienced on Monday. Drop sets are a technique that I think can be applied effectively, for example, the week before a deload or the week before a vacation, but not every single week. If we think about the bigger goal of progressive overload, the whole point is to build programs that get progressively more intense throughout the program. Week one, we shouldn't be driving a ton of fatigue. That's an intro week where we typically wanna leave room on the table to progress week two, three, four. As we build up later in the week, if you're doing, for example, a four week program, on week three, that's where we might actually be pushing for a new one rep max attempt or a plus set or a drop set, depending on your goals between strength or hypertrophy. So overall, if you're building a strength block of training, consider incorporating rest pause sets. If you're building a hypertrophy block of training, consider incorporating drop sets, especially towards the end of that program where you want to build additional fatigue. Hopefully this video helps you improve your programming. If you wanna learn more, make sure you check out the podcast episode, which I will link in the description below on how to incorporate rest pause sets, drop sets, compound sets, giant sets, cluster sets. That's gonna go into a lot more detail than this video alone. I also want to give credit to Mass, the monthly application in strength sport. This is not sponsored by Mass, but that is a really helpful tool that I've been using to find research articles and read their reviews. So if that's something you're interested in, I will link that below as well so you can check it out. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Subscribe so you don't miss any future videos, and I will catch you in the next one.